Okay, welcome back. This is video B in our ex using Excel to analyze and forecast time series data. Okay, so if you missed, if you're just starting to watch this, you should definitely go back and first watch the Excel time series analysis video one because this is part two of it or part B and uh, you missed a lot if you're gonna start at this point okay we created this variable we created these guys which took quite a bit of explanation we plotted all this stuff and we talked about it okay conceptually okay so we're gonna move on from here so let me pull this time series aside so if you recall we created the centered moving average column of four periods this stands for centered moving average four periods so next thing we want to do is we said that this this step over here smoothed the time series so now and we we said what smoothing essentially means is taking out the seasonal component and the irregular component okay so now that we've taken it out and we plotted that by the way here now we can extract from the difference between the original data and the seasonal and irregular less data. In other words, the, this line removes it. So this is without seasonal, seasonality and irregularity. We can see what the difference is and we can actually learn about these two guys. Okay. In, in essence, what we did was we took these two out and now what we're going to do is we're going to now look back at the original data and see how much of the original data was this so we can extract this the seasonality and irregularity okay and the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a column called let's see let's say st comma it okay and these t's are supposed to be subscripts so if I can very quickly do that, it'll be great. Okay, and they stand for the seasonal component and the irregular component, which are two of the three components in the classical uh, classical uh, time series model, multiplicative model. So the classical multiplicative model says that the time series value at time t equals the multiplication or the product of the seasonal component times the irregular component times the trend component. We haven't gotten to the trend component yet, but we've talked about these two and we're, we're about to extract these two pieces. And yt is just the time series. That's this guy. Okay, so this is the classical multiplicative model for time series. All right, so now let's continue. I didn't want to do too much theory. I want to do more application here, but it's important for you to understand, okay? So in order to do this, we go on the first row of our centered moving average, and we just simply divide yt, which is our original data, divided by our centered moving average, okay? And let me just get rid of some decimal places. We don't want to look at too Okay, and let's drag this down. You can drag it down for as many values as you have in your centered moving average. So match this guy, okay? So the formula to do this was, let me also, this is AKA YT, yeah, okay? So let's make a subscript here, okay? So even though we're talking about car sales here, Generally speaking, this we call YT. This is the time series data, the original data. Okay, so this column here is YT divided by the centered moving average. Okay, that's how we calculated it. I got to just I'm putting this row up here just as a reminder of some other ways that we call the data and also how we calculated it so again we just did yt the original time series values which were these got this plot visually in blue divided by 
the center moving average numbers which is this plot in red so in essence what we're doing is we're taking each one of these guys and dividing it by these guys okay and by doing this we're learning about the seasonality and the irregularity okay so let's just understand very quickly what this 1.1 means this 1.1 over here means that in year one quarter three the seasonality and irregularity components were 10 percent above the smoothed outline okay and this next uh, let's go to one that's below uh, one so here in year two quarter two the seasonality and irregularity component combined was 16 percent below the smoothed curve okay so this we call this sometimes the baseline okay so we could say 16 percent okay below the baseline okay maybe I'll write baseline up there that's our baseline so let's go to year two quarter two that's here so this guy see was 16 percent below the uh, baseline which is this line right here that we drew okay and then the analysis for all the rest follows the same logic all right so let me just call this baseline as another word okay another synonym for all this stuff you'll find in a lot of stats and, and other uh, subjects there's always like uh, 10 different ways of calling something okay so for us this column here is our baseline so this uh, val this value says that year four quarter year one quarter four was 13 percent above baseline okay so that's that column now let's move on to our next step our next step is to get rid of IT okay get rid of irregularity and just extract ST so this is where let me just copy this and delete this guy this is where we want to quantify just the seasonal component for quarter one two three and four and the way we do this is to average for example if we want the seasonal component we have four seasons right we agreed that the cycle lasts four seasons right so that's why we took a four uh, period moving average so we're gonna have four seasonal components okay or seasonal indexes so we're gonna uh, in order to do this the logic is to to average each uh, seasonal irregular component combined for each quarter and that will get rid of the irregularity so uh, maybe it's easier to show you the idea is we'll create a table somewhere off on the side maybe here let me move this up okay this will be uh, where we can calculate this stuff so we have one two three four and here we're going to calculate the seasonal index or let's just call it what we've been using here this symbol okay let's center this stuff make it nice and organized okay the idea is we want to average for quarter one if we want the seasonal component we have to go to every quarter one seasonal uh, irregular component that we have in this column and average them so we don't have anything here we don't calculate that the first quarter one that we have is in year two the second quarter one that we have hold the control button down click on year three finally year four so these were all quarter ones I average them out and this way I, I get rid of IT I'm left with just ST okay that's the logic alright and then I do this for quarter two equals average first quarter two I have is in year two hold control down two 
two. Okay. And actually, there is a much more efficient way to do this. Instead of using the average function, you can use the average if function. So this is a bit of Excel fancy. You could do it exactly how I was doing it for the for, the, for quarter three and four, or you could do this except average if function. And the range, the first argument is this guy, F4, comma, cell N22, which is in this column, unfortunately, we can't see it, comma, the numbers that we want to average, okay, so that's these numbers here, and I'm going to have to lock that, I'm going to have to adjust this to here, okay, so these two have to have the same length. Hit enter, you see I still get 0.93, I can pull this down now, I don't have to repeat that function. So do it either way you are comfortable with. Okay, This was just a little fancier and it actually saves us time if you understand. Okay, so now that we got these guys, the next, I, the next thing to do is we have to take every, in this column, everywhere we have a quarter one, we want to put a 0.93, quarter one, point nine three and so on and so forth. Everywhere we see a quarter two, we want to put a point eight four. Okay, so let's do that. You could do this manually. And then repeat. Or copy and paste. Or you could use a VLOOKUP function. And I'm just going to elect to do it the most efficient way. We're going to look up the quarter. We're going to look it up in this table. Lock the table. Comma. When you find it, give me column two. Comma. False means give me an exact match. And this will take care of that. And you can drag this all the way down. And you should drag it down, okay? However you do it, the ma more manual way or the more fancy way. Drag it down for the entire length of the time series data. Okay, and we could just get rid of some decimal places. So you could see what I did was I got these numbers into the right places here. Okay, so these are the seasonal components. Okay, so let's just analyze one in year one, quarter four. The seasonal component is 14% above baseline. So let's look at that visually year one, quarter four. That's this cell right here. The seasonal component is 14% above the baseline. Okay. Okay, and in this video, in part B, part two, I'm just going to do one more step and then leave the finale for video three, part three. Okay, so in this next step, what we're going to do is we're going to de seasonalize the data, okay, which formulaically amounts to doing yt divided by st. We got yt and we have st, so it should just be really simple division, right? Let me just fix my symbols. Okay. Okay, so we can start with the first row. Yt, that's our original data, divided by st. And now you can just drag this all the way down. So this is important. This is the culmination of all, so far, of all this hard work that we did here and here. Okay, we finally de-seasonalized the data. We got rid of the seasonality and irregularity also. Okay, so make sure to watch video three or part C of this series so that we can finish this up. There's a, there's a couple steps remaining and they require slightly uh, different techniques, okay, before we can finally forecast for next year, year five, okay? All right, so thanks for watching and make sure to continue watching part three or part C, depending on how I end up naming it.